Welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, Coriander, Killian, it's time to talk about the classic, the classic Mad Max starring Mel Gibson. Yeah, it is. All right. We, we've returned back. We've returned back. Um, as we always do, just to give our viewers a sense of where we're going with things, to give them a quick little take. Let's just have you guys give me a quick take. When I say Mad Max, what comes to your mind when you think of this movie? I'll start with you, Coriander, and then we'll go to Killian. Uh, I think of that armored plated muscle car, man. And the, mm -hmm. the uh, I guess you want to say the turbo powered revenge that he goes on. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. How about you, Kill? Man, I was gonna say that. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, just just the um, a, a very basic storyline, sort of the same way you could look at like John Wick, but so complex. And then you wrap the whole po post-apocalyptic vibe, or at least this movie on the verge of post-apocalypse yes. it's it's very interesting that yeah. the time period this one's in because it's sort of there's yeah. teetering and um just young mel they're, gibson they're man to, just they're, tr they're still yeah. trying to hold on to civilization yes they are yeah and it, it's very interesting because you normally don't see movies at this point in it you're either in right. the good por portion or you're in the leather spike portion <laughs> and suspenders right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good point because you know, and, and you just said that, and it just came to my my mind. This is very unique in that sense because this is right in between. This is right mm -hmm. before the total fall. And yeah. what's also interesting is that the way that the movie is set up, you don't get a full sense of how how close it is to that edge, and also how far far it came from civilization you, you're totally out of the loop you know you just because the movie just starts right off and we're on we're on the road and we're doing what we got to do so it's really interesting that way i never really thought of it like that way um yeah but it's a great film it's a classic movie um it never gets old and and all these years later the movie is 40 years old it still has a uniqueness to it it started you know, or I should say it, it truly popularized this subgenre, this post-apocalyptic sci-fi action uh, subgenre. And I don't think any film has really matched the level uh, that this no. movie hit. So yeah. anyways, we're going to get finished getting set up. So for you guys watching the replay, sit back, relax, enjoy this classic review of this classic movie, Mad Max. All right. Man, those old trailers, they always get you going, man. The voiceover yeah. and the music, you know, that in the not I mean, too distant like, future. <laughs> right. You know, it's like it really pumps you up. And but you know, the great thing about it is that this movie gives you the payoff. Like it, you know, yeah, it some trailers they really fool you, and then you watch the movie and you're like, oh man, this but the but it did not fool you. It really gave you that 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 feeling that you're watching something from a different time. You don't know exactly the time. I mean, there are hints in the movie. I think we'll talk about that a little later, but yeah, this movie is, whew. but anyways, all right, let's get this thing going. All right, kill. I'll start with you. What do we got? Let's, let's talk about some of the high points, a little bit of the story. Cause this thing starts right off in the middle of action. Okay. Well, I, I think I, I can speak for Coriander, too, because I think she's also a gearhead. You got badass cars, man. You got the open road. I mean, you know, you got right. the black on black. You got the horsepower. I mean, you have all of that. You have also a cop movie, you know. Right. You have, it, you have an action movie, and you have post-apocalyptic. Mm -hmm you know, uh, sci-fi mixed in it. So it's like a beautiful right. mat mix mosh of a little bit of everything that's just awesome. And also mm -hmm. the way that it's directed and filmed, it feels so visceral, so just gritty and just mm -hmm. it, even, even I would say in a good way, unpolished in, in a yeah, good right, way. Right. 
you know, um, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll get to some of the, you know, behind the scenes of how it was made and so forth. Mm. But I mean, just car, car combat, car racing, car action, violence. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this this movie is amazing. You guys know it. What, yeah, what more can you ask for? And of course, Mel Gibson. Right. You know, like he's a handsome dude. He's our he's our protagonist. Tight leather pants. Yeah. I mean, you know, hey, it doesn't do much for me, but I get it. You know. Uh, right. <laughs> right. So yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, and the movie the movie starts off with a chase. Like you, you're already right in the middle of it, and mm -hmm. They're just kind of going through the motions, and, and Coriander, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to you, but it starts off with uh, the Knight Rider, whose name yeah. I didn't know at first until we had done research on it a while back, but Crawford Montezano, um, known as the Knight Rider, he basically is being chased by the cops. So what did you, I'll throw it to you, Coriander, so what did you think of, of the opening scene, how that all played out? Uh, I mean... The opening scene alone, if it doesn't draw you in, I, I don't know what would. I mean, right. it's so good. And I mean, like you said, these people were really doing these scenes and driving this fast. And mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. uh, it it makes the movie that much better. And that scene with the baby right. in the middle of the road, yeah. like you were saying, yeah. how the hell did they do that? Because... I don't know. It, it, this movie is just, yeah, it's just so freaking good, man. From start yeah, to finish. I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and they did, um, you know, a lot of the stunts. It was illegal what they were doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. They, they, man. they were trying to find stretches of road in Australia where there was no one around, no cops and so forth. And, and George Miller, you know, credit to George Miller who... Um, he raised the money working in a hospital. The movie cost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so he was working his ass off. Um, he he cut. He made shortcuts wherever he could. Um, even the biker gang. A lot of the biker gang. They were real bikers, and yeah. um, they were paid. Cool. They were paid by giving them beer and and stuff like that. <laughs> so you know, he made all these shortcuts. But mm -hmm. the thing of it is, is that it actually, like you were saying, kill it really made it unpolished and felt almost realistic. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But um, I'll, I'll throw it back to you, Kill. You know, in that opening scene, like Coriander was saying, it's like, it really draws you in and some of the, the stunt work, you know, you got the baby yeah, walking yeah. in the middle of the road. Yeah. What were you thinking when you saw the opening? Well, you, you know, you know, it's interesting and we all know this feeling that I'm gonna bring up when you're watching a scene in mm -hmm. a movie and you're like, all mm -hmm. right, is almost going a little too long. And I love it mm -hmm. because normal Hollywood right. movies, the chase sequence is kind of short. George Miller's like, no, 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 no. I love cars. And this, that's, mm -hmm. that's a main part of this. So it goes on pretty long mm -hmm. and it's yeah. like, right. oh man. And, and I realize that every time I watch this movie and I'm like, damn, this is long, but I'm like, that's mm -hmm. good. I like that. It's, it's it's kind of bucking my expectation because I'm so used to right. quick short little quick cuts of you know well manicured and polished race scenes or, or chase sequences. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I love about this movie, and it also kind of shows you a little bit of the mental of uh, Max. Max mm -hmm. is sitting and he's kind of like salivating. He's waiting. He's like, he, mm -hmm. he, he's like, you know, it's like he's not afraid of it in any way, shape, or form. He's just waiting to get into the ring. He's like that wrestler's like, tag me in, bro. Exactly, like, I'm ready for man. this. I'm right. ready for this. <laughs> so that already right, shows right. that Max is, not that he's already a little unhinged, but he's kind of a, an adrenaline junkie a little bit. Yeah. You know, he's it's, or, hell, man. Yeah. yeah, he's ready to yeah. rock, especially when it comes to like car vehicular combat i'll say like that and i just right. love it the way that they keep showing him they show like you know the white knuckles and he's just kind of like has his his hand on the gear or he's like just kind of like just like all right and they barely show like yeah. his face until like the end and mm -hmm. you're hearing the other guys wreck out or like Max, he's coming yes. your way, bro. You're, you're the yeah. last line of defense. He's like, he is. he's like, hell yeah, I am. <laughs> I got this. And yeah. it's like, well, it, well okay. yeah, it was funny because he, well, 
Well, because he was thinking, you know, he was like, uh, you know, what do we got? Or, you know, asking questions like that, you know, and, and how yeah. bad is it and stuff like yeah. that. And you yeah, can just tell first, that he's a seasoned officer. Yeah. And at first it looked like he yeah. might have been on like his lunch break. He was like just chilling, yes. you know, yes. and he's like, OK, all right, what, what yeah. do we got? Like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, he just gets Getting into it. And it. Yeah. yeah. And and the way that Mel Gibson plays Max you know, say what you want about Mel Gibson or his acting, but the way that he portrays Max in all of the movies in the, you know, his, at least his portion of the, the Mad Max saga, he's ice cold, he's determined, he's yeah. a loving father and a husband. He runs the gambit of emotion. And I think this yeah, was a great does. way to introduce that character because it's just like, yeah. man, he just gets right in it and just you know yeah, he he wreck shop so mm. oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a great absolutely. scene great scene yeah. yeah i mean and it was a lot of great little little things that they did in the stunt work in the chase like when the car uh hits that um it's almost like a minivan and the minivan almost flips they, like a little bit in the yeah, air they actually em- yeah, yeah they actually emptied the van out so it was top heavy so when it got hit it could really give you the illusion of of hitting it harder and it was able to spin you know little things like that that they did which the point i'm trying to bring up and and then i'll give it to you Corey andrew but the point i was trying to bring up is that it just shows and we've said it many times but i'm gonna say it again it just shows that even if you don't have a lot of money you can still make effective effects you can still make effective shots in a movie and George Miller, again, he didn't have a lot of money. They were cutting corners and doing whatever they could. And these stunt men, I mean, they were really going all out. When you see these cars flipping and stuff, that's, you know, it's really happening. And, and, and a lot of what they were doing was illegal too. So it's like, this movie was like really a renegade. It was as renegade as Mad Max is, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. You know, once once we get to the end of the chase and the Knight Rider has that iconic scene where he's about to um, explode, the car's about to explode and his eyes kind of bug out, almost like it's like Looney Tunes. It's so iconic. But after that, Coriander, when they show Max with Jesse and his son Sprague at home, just kind of chilling out, I thought it was really interesting to see the tenderness that Mel Gibson portrayed. What did, what did you think of that with the yeah. whole family setting and the way he played that? I mean, you could tell that he's a good guy who, you know, he's a good cop. He's mm-hmm. a loving father, like you said, and husband. And right. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it just shows that, you know, this poor guy goes through a lot in this movie. Right. And you feel yeah. so bad for him because you see how much he loves them and how much she loves mm-hmm. him and yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's just, uh, you feel bad for him. Yeah. Yeah. And when you think of the franchise, it's interesting because obviously things happen, you know, in this movie to change who he is at the core. So Definitely. I thought, yeah. And I thought, you know, like you said, kill, this is a very basic story. It's a very lean and tight script pretty much um but george miller wasn't afraid to show that tender side of max to kind of in other words he's setting you up for where the story is going to go and i think that was very smart is is what i'm getting at but kill what as we get further into the story what were you thinking about obviously the big part of the story is the knight rider was chased by max and killed because he because max is just Max is the shit. And then they come upon um, Johnny. And, and you know, because the, the, basically you got Toe Cutter and the biker gang that come into town to pick up the Knight Rider's body in the coffin. And, and by the way, and you can jump in, Kill. But that whole scene was just crazy because you got a sense of how badass this gang was and how bad yeah, badass Toe Cutter was without a lot of dialogue and without a lot of violence per se Mm -hmm. what what were you thinking about 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 that scene because it was it was an interesting intro to them yeah i mean you have at least you know 20 
25 guys on 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 uh, motorcycles and they roll into Mm -hmm. town like an army and toe cutter is their king and Mm -hmm. you know and once again if this was 20 years more into this future he would be king toe cutter by that time you know Mm -hmm. what what i'm saying because we're on that cusp they don't have kings or rulers like you know lord you know humongous or something like that or morton joe because we're right on that Mm -hmm. cusp but had toe cutter lived he probably would have been yeah and and Uh, and of course if you well of course you said it yourself you're talking about a morton joe later on in the series in fury road and it's the same actor same actor rest in peace morton joe yeah Yeah, and he just passed away yes Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, um, you know, they they come yeah. into this little, little town and once again, you know, it's on the cusp of things, so they still have diners and gas stations mm-hmm. and you know, motels and you know, s- some normalcy. Uh but mm-hmm. yeah, man, they're badass. You don't you don't yeah. don't mess with those guys. Don't even look in their direction right. because Ooh. that'll set them off even more than <laughs> what they might do if you're just around, like if you're just around, they yeah. might mess with you. But if you look in their direction or give them any stuff, you're toast. Yes. Yeah, you, <laughs> well, well, you know, and it's funny too. And, and, and Coriander, I'll let you jump in, but I just had to do this. When Toe Cutter, they're picking up the casket and Knight Rider, you know, obviously his body's there. And the guy who's kind of in charge of the, it's like a train station where the, the body came in off the train and the guy who's like, I I guess he's in charge or he's just a town guy that knows what's going on or whatever. And he's like, well, there's not a lot of him left. And the gang is kind of like looking around and and um, he said something like, uh, uh, he, I forgot what he, what he said, but Bubba, one of the other, you know, gang members said something like, well, they must have left out his heart. You know, basically saying he had a lot of heart because that's the thing with these gang people. They they have to have that bravado. They have to be known as badass because Knight Rider, that's what was his downfall is when he saw that Max was as badass as him. He started to lose his cool a little bit. That's why he started crying right before his his, his accident. But anyways, the point I'm making is this guy from the town, he's just like talking all this shit. And Toe Cutter, all of a sudden, and Korean, I know you love this part. Toe Cutter just turns around and puts his hands up to the guy's face. And like, <laughs> his name is the Knight Rider. And the guy's looking at Toe Cutter like, what? And he's like, remember him when you look at the night sky. And I'm like, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, can, 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 I, can, can I just say something? To look at that actor. To look at how he's dressed, did you really yes. think that the first kind of verbal things that he would say would be something so kind of beautiful and poetic? I yeah. I love nice. that because once again, a uh, George Miller, that actor, they're bucking expectations. You know, they're he, bucking what you, what you, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're bucking what you think might come out of his mouth. I mean, you had, you know, Knight Rider. You see me, man? I'm a suicide you know, machine. You know, he's he's kind of <laughs> off the chain, and he's like, yeah, he's he's barking really loud to be seen. Toe Cutter right. don't have to bark. He yeah, is the right. king. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, 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 and yeah, do it again, Coriander. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please. that was that was good because I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't yeah, think I but, could. But but when you're on the top of the mountain, you don't you have nothing to prove. You don't have to, you know, right. to, to to go crazy like that. You could just say, say, hey. You know, and it's like, oh, okay, yep. okay. That's exactly how he did it too. He <laughs> right. just he just turned around to the guy. He's like, his name was the night rider. Yeah. Remember him when you look up at the night sky. And it was like <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I'm sorry. All right, Corey, I'll yeah. let you go. What, what okay. I assume that that's your thought too of Toe Cutter is that he was just like a silent, deadly badass, right? He, I mean, this fucking biker gang could like, they could have come from hell, honestly. I mean, these guys, I mean, you've got, you know, you had that couple in the car that were just like, holy shit, look at these guys. Mm -hmm. They just kind of wanted to get away. And that brought attention to them. And good God, look what happened. I mean, Mm-hmm. Rape, and I'm thinking it happened to both parties, both man and female mm-hmm. here. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It. It. Mm-hmm. Ugh, these guys just. Yeah. They're just a badass yeah. friggin' biker gang from hell. 
Yeah. Well, and of course, that that's where we get into what I was alluding to a little bit earlier, kind of the meat of this story because yeah. Max and Goose, we can't forget about Jim Goose. Jim Goose is yeah. badass. I love Jim yeah, Goose, he is. you know, in this movie, uh, played by Steve Bisley, Bisley. And um, he actually was a roommate um, uh, of Mel Gibson's and actually encouraged Mel Gibson uh, to audition uh, for the role. Um, but anyways, that, we'll talk more about that type of stuff too. But Jim Goose, the goose and Max, they go and find the couple um, that were sexually assaulted and they find the woman and, um, and, but then they find Johnny, Johnny, the boy yeah. was like, I don't know. He was like wasted or whatever. And they bring yeah, him into custody. Now, obviously in our world, it's, it's one and done. He's, he's going to be prosecuted. It's not even going to be a question in this world. Like you said earlier, Kill, they're just trying to hold on to civilization. So there is no, you know, there's not always a sense of of, of bringing people to justice. and Or if you yeah, do, man. you know, th th there's a lot of fear in this world in the movie. So bottom line is Johnny the Boy is let go. They called it no contest because yeah. nobody the showed up. That, yes, I can't believe no one showed. You know, these mm -hmm. friggin' people deserve everything they get. And no one no. showed. That's crazy. No one right? showed. So they had to let him go. And, and Jim Goose went off. I mean, he's he's punching. Yep. He's kicking. And, and uh, you know, anyways, point being uh, the gang, you know, Johnny the Boy was like, we know who you are, Bronze. We know who you are, Goose. And da -da -da, basically saying, yeah. we're going to get you back. And so this kind of sets up really, you know, the, the big portion uh, of this movie to the finale. So I'll throw it to you, Kill. First of all, what did you think of that and then how it affected what was to happen afterwards? Well, you know, it, it's kind of like you, you have a, a police officer or, you know, in this mm -hmm. case, you know, uh, someone who works for the Hall of Justice and they want to mm -hmm. do it the right way. But, right. you know, sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do an immoral thing in a moral world. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and we kind of and, and, and that's just such a prediction of the future because we see mm -hmm. what's going to happen and 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 the one thing about this movie is it's it's not just a one revenge story it's mm -hmm. it's like you know uh um knight rider gets oh. killed and the gang wants revenge against right. max which forces max mm -hmm. then to get revenge against them so it's like a dual revenge story and it also mm -hmm. creates damn near a superhero in Mad Max, you know, he, he mm -hmm. becomes myth, mm -hmm. he becomes legend, you know, right. um, mm -hmm. and, and, and also just, it sets him on a path of, look, I don't have time to do it the right way or judge you or this and that. I'm, I'm just going right. to give you, I'm going to give you what you didn't give your, your, your victims. I'm going to give you a choice. Here's a saw mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's something that's going to blow up soon. Mm -hmm. it, it's like watching right. the it's like watching the saw franchise hey live or die it's your mm -hmm. choice you know it's yeah. like all right i'm giving you a choice so that's as and that's as fair and equal as i can be i'm giving you a choice right, right. You know? and you gotta wonder because i know uh and i'm pretty sure i had read before that james wan was a huge fan of this movie <laughs> and, and you've got to yeah. wonder if if there was inspiration a little bit um, you know, for Saw, you know, from, I would say from a so. movie like this. I, I would think, say yeah. so. But, but Coriander, but before we get to the choice he gave, so Coriander, I'll, I'll throw it to you. We see that Max decides that he wants to, to, to retire. He wants to spend time with his family. And of course, we have that, that wonderful scene in the garage where, where, you know, they're trying to entice him, you know, with the car and, and this and that. And, and they're trying to get him to to stay on by saying, you know, here's the car that we we pieced together from. And the guy, the mechanic was like, oh, you know, pieces from here, pieces from there and this and that. Um, but ultimately, it doesn't work. He wants to be with his family and they decide to go uh, on vacation. Now, again, the, this is some more of the tender moments. It's crazy. When you think about Mad Max, you don't think about tender moments. You know what I'm saying? But if you watch the movie, you do get 
a character arc where there are the tender moments for Max yeah. and his family, you know, for Max and Jesse and Sprague. But anyways, what were you thinking in in that part of the movie? Because they go on vacation, they're up in the middle of nowhere type of thing. And of course we have the wonderful uh, scene, or I should say scary scene, where Jesse comes basically face to face with Toe Cutter. And that yeah. kind of, that really is the the true you know, this is where it really gets bad. You know, what was you yeah, thinking if, in that part of the story? If she, you know, if she, I think if she acted differently, maybe mm. it would have turned out a little different. But, you yeah, know, she where she kind of, yes, she was feisty. And that, mm. I think, there made him like, ooh, this girl's going to get her turn now. And, yeah, you mm. just... Mm. Mm. Mistake, mistake, honestly, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. that was because yeah, that, that's a it's a heartbreaking scene that's coming up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and without getting into the specifics of it, obviously this movie's been around forever, but you know, shit happened. But yeah. kill the other thing too, which was which was super heartbreaking as well. There's a lot of heartbreak in this movie, mm -hmm. but obviously what happens with Goose because. Yeah. When when Goose was so upset about Johnny the boy walking, you know, from the case, and he said to him, "We know who you are now." And obviously, they do exact revenge on Goose. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I was just like, "No!" You know, it's like yeah. it's interesting how this movie, as lean as this movie is, I got invested in, yes. in these characters. Obviously, mm -hmm. obviously, you get invested with Max because he gets the most screen time. But I was really invested in Goose. So when when they do what they did to exact revenge against Goose, how did you feel? What did you think about that? You, you know, it it, it it sucks. I mean, there's no other way because I, I I think everyone liked Goose too. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it it once again just shows the circle of violence uh, that yes. exists in this world and the circle of revenge and you know they they they, they felt slighted by goose they felt slighted by max mm -hmm. they felt slighted by mm -hmm. uh um jesse and mm -hmm. you know and it's just like man and 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 like coriander said you know how you know she was like feisty or whatever but it's like mm -hmm. in this world you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't you don't know what yeah, yeah. set these guys off so it's yeah. kind of mm -hmm. like you know but i i agree with one thing you also just said knight as far as tender moments in the Mad Max universe. This movie is the only movie that has like those light tender moments. I mean, you have other ones where like, okay, Mad Max, you know, he meets the, the kids and they, they like, mm -hmm. oh, you're, you're a Colonel so-and-so and this and that, you know, okay. But other than that, it's a harsh, unforgiving like universe that George Miller has created. And yeah. what I love about this movie is it straddles the line of both tender and like holding on to the last grasp of civilization. And then yeah. by yeah. by the the, the 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 I would say the beginning of the fourth quarter of this movie, so, sort of say, when Max loses, you know, certain people in his life, uh trying mm -hmm. trying not to give spoilers away, you see that that I'm 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 just done. I'm done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and right. and it's and it's right. scary. I mean, we talk about like other characters and the bad guys are scary. Mm -hmm. But you can look at Max and say, "Okay, this guy is is probably you know, uh, uh, Morton Joe, young and Morton Joe, or mm -hmm. young Lord, yes. you know, um, Ungus. This is how those characters probably began. I mean, whatever mm -hmm. villains you can think of, any any post apocalyptic th thing, you know, man, this is the origins mm -hmm. of a possible villain who could just yes. go out into the wasteland and because of his his pure charisma. I mean, every movie, Mad Mad Max he interacts with a community of people and they're just attracted to his charisma or, Hey, right. you, you, you need to, you need that. Then you need me, you know, this and, that. And, right. and, 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 and it's just like, man, it's something about this guy where if he truly wanted to, he could become yeah. a king, a king or an emperor and do really evil things. But he just right. decided to go become more of an introvert and a recluse. Mm -hmm. And just, if you cross right. my path or you, fuck with me <laughs> or steal my car 
I'm going to get you, <laughs> you know, right, I just want, right. I just want to, I just want to live out my time in the waste and I'll come into town right. if I need water or supplies. But other than that, leave me alone. Mm. I'm, and he's been mourning through all of these movies, the loss that yes. happens in this movie, yeah. you know, and, and I think and, he also, okay. and I, th I think he also, and of course we'll talk about the other movies coming up. I think he also is mourning the loss of his own humanity. Yes. You know, he yes. was, like 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 Corey Anders said earlier, good Max guy. was a, a good family. guy. He was a family guy. Yeah, you know he, yeah. he 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 played with his kid. He he was uh, loved his wife with his wife. Yep. and he had a buddy. You know him and Goose. You know they were boys. You know Their and chemistry and I think so good. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think you know when things happen in this movie and then beyond further in the franchise i think a big part of it is that he's also mourning that life that he had that that humanity that heart mm -hmm. you know because he obviously changed drastically like you said yeah, and like we'll talk about later on but as we start to end up coriander i'll i'll i'll, I'll pose it to you uh when when we get to the end like killian is alluding to the direction that Max takes, and obviously he's exacting his revenge. What what did you think of that in general? I mean, were were I mean he really was borderline villainous. I mean, what were your thoughts yeah, was, on on well, the finale like and what said, he was doing? Yeah, I mean, to see him change the way he did, I mean, it, it's incredible, honestly. Because, like you say, he starts out such a loving devoted dad, husband, you know, right. he's got best friends and yeah. And it's mm -hmm. just, uh, it's just tragic that it ends up the way it does. And, right. and I'm glad, you know, that he was able to at least take care of the problem. You know what I mean? Sure. It sucks that right. how things turn out. Yeah. It's just, right. yeah, it's just such a good movie. <laughs> It really, really is. I mean, this movie, yeah. it made $100 million worldwide. It grossed that. And it was the most mm -hmm. profitable film for 20 years until The Blair Witch Project. So this movie, mm -hmm. it was amazing. It was banned in New Zealand for five years because it was so violent. But when you think about it, if you watch the movie, so much of the violence was off screen. But mm -hmm. the way George shot the movie and the elements that he put forth in front to you and the way that your mind works. Cause, cause even myself, you know, I had a, a gap of time. I don't know, maybe in my mid twenties when I hadn't seen it in a little while. And when I revisited it, I was like, wow, you know, it wasn't as, as in your face as I thought I remembered, but your mind really, does a lot of the work is what I'm saying. You know what I mean, Kill? And, yeah. and I think that that's yeah. what makes I think that's what makes the movie so good. And and more importantly, I think it's what makes the movie stand the test of time, is because your mind can work in uh, you know, some of those things that George wanted you to think about, you know, and um and of course, you know, it's it's based on the a real oil crisis uh in, in 1973. George was again, George was taking some real real life events, you know, like I said, he worked in a hospital to try to raise the money. He saw a lot of car uh, crashes and, and wrecks and things like that. So he was, you know, a lot of these things added into the rawness of the film, but um, it's a wonderful film. It still holds up. And, um, it, you know, it, it the, the, the sad part, and this will be the last thing I throw to, to both of you or either of you, the sad part about it is, is that I don't think there'll ever be another movie like this, as far as in this, in this subgenre, anyways, because I don't think you can really do better. You know, it had to have the rawness. It had yeah. to be unpolished. You had to have these extras that weren't even actors to kind of give you that realness. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever think about it like that, either of you guys? Because 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 that just oh, came yeah. to my mind. You know, it's like. This is a one and done, really, you know? Well, well, yeah, you know, it's funny, you know, another genre, you know, uh, that this movie also kind of reflects. It's a Western. It's a Western with yes. 
like vehicles, you know, and it's, yes. it's post-apocalyptic. You know, you, you mm -hmm. have the the lone gunman that's gonna, you know, right the wrongs, but he's also kind of a shade of gray himself. He's not necessarily a good guy or a bad guy. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean this this movie. You know, it, it, it's a classic, and I agree with you. It is. You you can't you can't redo it. You can't mm -hmm. try to mimic it. It it is its own genre essentially, and it's yeah. it's and it's George Miller. It's George Miller, right. and you can't you you can't you know that's why. And 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 I think we had said this before talking about this director George Miller, director George Miller, <laughs> director George. Right. Miller. It's. It's solely been him. It's sort of like Star Wars with George Lucas. It's it's always mm -hmm. been his hand truly guiding this universe, which is right. very rare, you know, and it's just yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I guess that's that's all we got, man. This is just such an awesome movie. Um, six six hundred horses of uh, fuel injected revenge, vengeance. Ooh. I mean, yeah, man. this is awesome, man. It's yeah. crazy. But, um, but anyways, uh, for you guys watching, we appreciate you watching. Please leave us a comment down in the comment section. Let us know what you think of this fantastic, legendary, classic Mad Max. What are some of your favorite scenes or, or, or memories of this movie? Because there's just so many. We could keep going on and on, but we won't do that. But leave us a like. That'll really help the video and help us out tremendously. If you're not subscribed to The Night Watch Zone, please do so. And we really appreciate it. We'll catch you guys later. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you are The Night Watch. We are The Night Watch. Peace out. Peace. Peace.